Welcome back to the workshop. We're going to continue working on this AB165 uh, Fender Bassman amplifier uh, that belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, I've got some parts in that uh, I was waiting for, so now we can finish that power supply. Get that. Uh, I got the correct power cord in this time. This is an 18 gauge. The other one had been uh, 16 gauge, so it wouldn't fit. Uh, so we can do that today and get started on some safety upgrades. Now the capacitor for the bias supply, my plan was to use a, a DC motor capacitor, a metal film capacitor, because those just don't fail the way that electrolytic capacitors do. And uh, in the bias supply, that's kind of a critical capacitor. If that goes bad, really bad stuff can happen to your amplifier. So I wanted to use a metal film capacitor, couldn't find the right one. The one that I had ordered was, well, the DC motor capacitor just didn't have long enough leads, so I couldn't get that in there. And then this other, where did I put it? I guess I put it away somewhere. I had ordered another one that uh, was pretty bulky, and it was just the wrong value, completely wrong value. I didn't notice when I was ordering it. It needs to be a, a 47 mic or 57, uh, 50 microfarad capacitor, and that was only a 22 microfarad. So, instead, what I got is this... And this is, uh, this is a Vichy 100 volt, uh, 100 volt 47 microfarad capacitor. Now, it's not a metal film cap, but this is a very good capacitor. And this will outlast most everything else in that amplifier. Uh, the uh, when when you're buying electrolytic capacitors, a typical just run-of-the-mill general use capacitor that doesn't have to be real rugged rugged is going to be uh, about a thousand hours. Uh, you get a decent one; it's going to be a three thousand hour capacitor. If you get a really good one, it might be a five thousand hour capacitor. This is an eight thousand hour capacitor, and it's also rated for twice the voltage that the other one was. So it's not going to have that extra stress on it that's going to cause it to drift off value over the years. And, uh, I mean, like I said, it'll outlast, um, well, at least the other capacitors in this amp by far. Um, so I would say that this is going to be good for another 40 years probably. And the next person that goes in and, and uh, works on this ampl amplifier will undoubtedly not know what it is, not know that it's an 8,000 hour capacitor and replace it anyway. And that's okay, because at least we know it's going to last that long. For the safety upgrades that we're doing on this amplifier, I'm going to be using some of these uh, metal oxide varistors. I'm also going to put a CL60 thermistor in there. And uh, there is currently no fuse for the filament supply. So I'm going to be installing a, an inline fuse for the filaments. Uh, the uh, the the MOVs, metal oxide varistors that we're using, are for uh, the Immortal Amp mods that you can find online. It was um, published in Premier Guitar, I think. Uh, it's an RG Keen article. Uh, you can look that up. Just look up Immortal Amplifier Mods. And basically what these are going to do is protect the amp from any... Uh, well, there's two spots that we're going to use them. One is going to be on the, the incoming power before it goes to the power transformer. And those are just going to be surge protectors um, and to protect the amp from surges. The other spot is actually going to be on the primary of the output transformer. Uh, and the, the example that R.G. Keene gives in his article is, let's say you're strumming a hard note and somebody trips over your speaker cord and unplugs it right in the middle of that note, you can blow your, power, your output transformer from that because you're putting a lot of energy out of those power tubes that suddenly has nowhere to go and so it fries the output transformer with that spike. So this will protect against that and um, I don't know probably other things as well uh, but it's just one of those worst case scenario insurance policies that doesn't cost much and so we're gonna make sure that this amplifier lasts a very long time. Okay so let's go ahead and start working on that power supply again. Now as it turns out these uh, power tube cover plates are uh, are the exact right size to fit on the uh, the screws that were holding this accessory plug in place here so it did take that out and um, 
So I'm going to use, I, I put different bolts in here because the old ones were a, a kind of a coarse thread that just screwed straight into the steel. There was nothing on the other side holding it in place. Much like the other ones that you see in here, uh, like this one here, and the ones that hold the doghouse in place, the dog, dog dish, dog, what do they call it? Whatever, the cover for the uh, filter caps. So anyway, I put some 632 bolts through here and put some thread locker on there to make sure that they don't come off. And this ends up being the perfect spacing also for this terminal strip. So this is what I'm going to use to mount those MOVs for the incoming power. And then over here, I've got another terminal strip that I'll use for the primary of the output transformer. One of the things that I'm doing as I go along is I'm taking the... Um, little little extra uh, length of leads that's poking through these eyelets and just bending them over uh, against the side of the eyelet just provides a little bit of extra mechanical strength so that uh, you don't have to completely rely on the solder uh, to do all the work. And that may or may not ever uh, benefit us at all, but you don't want to have the one amp that uh, has a broken solder joint because there was no mechanical strength there. Of course, I say that as if it hardly ever happens. Truth is, I don't know. The, uh, the real amp techs out there have probably seen it many times. Either way, uh, you definitely want to have a good mechanical foundation and not rely on the solder dude to do everything for you. I got ahead of myself here and soldered these resistors in place before I had the capacitors in there. So I'm making extra work for myself here. So these will need a touch of extra solder now, since I disrupted them. And this one's to pop up. Okay, that's done. Now this uh, this resistor here, this 470 ohm resistor for the bias supply, measured a little bit high. It had drifted up to about 550 ohms. And I don't have a uh, metal film resistor that I can use to replace that. What I do have is this 1 watt carbon comp resistor. And this thing's oh, actually a couple ohms under spec, uh, but it's brand new, so it, you know, this will last quite a while before it needs to be changed. First, I need to get this thing out of the way here. I'm trying to figure out why this capacitor didn't want to come out. I realized they actually used the lead of this capacitor to, uh, to go to the ground lug over here. So I'm just going to clip this off. We can reuse that lead after I clean it up a bit. And I think I'm going to take this wire out of here so that I'm not melting it while I'm trying to remove this resistor. There we go. Now, fortunately, there's not nearly as much solder on these eyelets as the other ones. Makes me wonder if some... Oh, by the way, um, you know, I mentioned that... I, I like hearing, I like reading comments from people who know more about these amps than I do. Um, someone, Jamie, uh, I don't remember the last name, um, commented on the last video, gave me some really good information. Thank you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate that uh, feedback. Um, obviously, 
Jamie Mo knows a lot more about these amps than I do, and uh, so he gave me some some uh, really useful information. Get out of my way. Um, and he mentioned that uh, these diodes have been replaced. So someone has been in here, and, and probably the uh, original solder joints were just welling up with solder. Uh, but these used to be the uh, the metal can type diodes, and uh, they've been replaced with good modern diodes. And one of the things he suggested was uh, replacing these... Uh, let's point the camera at it. Uh, right there. He suggested replacing those brown turd capacitors, uh, at least the uh, the two that are the phase inverter output coupling caps, uh, with some better capacitors. And I don't have anything in stock right now that would really work for that, so I'll have to order those, but I do plan on replacing those. The ones that I have right now are just the, uh, the generic uh, polypropylene um, these ones, these generic polypropylene caps, which I'm not going to use. Um, I've heard other people say that they don't like them. Uh, I don't know why, but um, I'm, I'm not going to use those because uh, uh, I can do better than that, I'm sure. The other ones that I have are these orange drops. These are the 600 volt orange drops, and they're massive. So there's no way, I mean, I couldn't get those in there if I wanted to. So I will have to order some other capacitors, uh, but I will be replacing those. Okay, one more down. These are a pain no matter what. Well, as I was stripping the jacket off of this power cord, I nicked the green wire just a little bit. Uh, not bad, and if you're going to nick any one of them, it's best if it's a green one, because that's, that's uh, ground anyway. Uh, but, just because I like to be careful, I'm going to put some heat shrink on here uh, to cover that spot. I don't have my heat gun with me, I don't even have a lighter with me, um, so... This is probably a good time to stop anyway. So I'm going to call it a day. I think this is probably going to end up being a little shorter video than uh, I normally do. Uh, so, you know, last time I did uh, two days in one video. I'm not going to do that this time. I want to just get it posted. So this may be a little shorter. Uh, but the next video, we should be able to finish up with this repair. I do have to order those uh, phase inverter output coupling capacitors, so I'll do that next time, and then I'll install the uh, metal oxide varistors and the CL60 thermistor. And, oh, and then the last thing I have to do is that uh, inline fuse for the filament supply. So, and I haven't really figured out where I'm... I want to secure that to something instead of just leaving it flopping around, so I'll have to figure that out still. Uh, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Like it if you like it. Comment and subscribe. Thanks again to Jamie for his uh, great comment on the last video. And we'll see you next time.